Hey everyone, my name is Chris Green, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make use of your AirPods or your AirPods Pro within a home studio environment when it comes to playing and recording music. Now, when it comes to using Bluetooth devices like these AirPods, there's always gonna be some issues, but I hope to show you some solutions in today's video that no matter what type of headphones you're using, if you wanna get into the wireless world, it's completely possible to make use of these devices. So let's get started. Now, first I wanna discuss why in the world would you use AirPods when you have so many other options available. These are my Bayer Dynamic DT770 Pro. These are closed back headphones. They're great for recording. They don't let a lot of sound out and they have this big spiral cable. And I also have these headphones. These are the Shure SRH 1840s. These are open back headphones. So they actually aren't great for recording music. You're going to hear a lot of bleed coming through the ear cups, but they're also very comfortable and they're great for mixing and mastering. And of course they have this long cable as well. Now those headphones, I do believe have a far superior sound when it comes to mixing and mastering. I could get by with the SRH 1840s much better than the AirPods. But when it comes to recording music, I've got so much more freedom when it comes to using wireless devices. Obviously if I've got those headphones on with a long cable coming down and I need to go to the wall, and grab my Stratocaster, I need to grab an accessory or a guitar pick. If I've got to go to the closet and grab a mic stand, I'm gonna to have to take the headphones off. Whereas if I'm using AirPods, I could just pop these in as soon as I come into the studio, I can record as much as I want to. I can walk around the room and I don't have to take these things out. Aside from the freedom they give you, they also have a familiarity because if you're like me, pretty much all day long, at some point you're gonna be popping in an AirPod to listen to a podcast, listen to music, maybe a TV show or a movie. There's a familiarity because just like I would do a car test, I would go to my car to listen to a mix. I can put these AirPods in and I know what music is supposed to sound like. So that's also a benefit as well. So yes, there are positives of using things like AirPods, but the biggest negative and probably the reason you're watching this video is because we have to deal with latency. All Bluetooth devices are gonna have some form of latency. We need to set up our computer so that we can compensate for that latency so that we can actually use these in a recording environment. Now, latency, if you haven't experienced this thing before, I'm gonna show you exactly what it does. So I'm gonna put these AirPods in for the remainder of the video. I'm gonna show you how to set up your AirPods. And then also, just so you know, this microphone here is the SM81. It's what I'm gonna be using when it comes to recording music or anything I'm recording in Studio One. This other microphone is my Neumann TLM-103. It's just what I'm using for talking. So this is my camera microphone, essentially. And then this is my music microphone. I've also got my audio interface because even though you're using your AirPods Pro, I don't recommend that you record with the microphones built into these devices. I still wanna use my lovely studio microphones. I wanna use my Apollo Twin interface, but I just wanna be listening to things I'm monitoring through my AirPods. And the first thing I want you to do is navigate to your settings, system settings, go into Bluetooth, make sure your AirPods are connected the same way you normally would with your laptop. Click the little I button so you can go into AirPods Pro settings or AirPods settings. Once you're on this menu, I wanna highly encourage you to check out transparency. So transparency mode essentially makes it to where it feels like you're not even wearing AirPods at all. Benefit being, if you're playing acoustic guitar or you're singing, if you have this switched to off, it's gonna feel like you have your ears plugged up, which is the same feeling you get from like a pair of in-ear monitors. Here I have these sure in-ear monitors. If I put these in my ears, I lose the sense of space. It feels like I've got my ears plugged up. Set it to transparency so you can hear what's going on around you. If you decide to go with adaptive or noise cancellation, I'm not saying that it's not possible for you to still use your AirPods. You're just gonna have to deal with possibly more latency or you're gonna have to do some different calculations when it comes to those modes. So mine's set to transparency. Down at the bottom, the only other thing I turned off was head gestures. Because when I'm in a recording environment, if I'm swaying my head, I don't want this to influence anything that's going on. Also, some of these other extra features, feel free to turn those off as well. Anytime I put these AirPods in, I want them to work, and I don't wanna be changing things if I'm just like touching the side. Another thing you might wanna check is on the sound tab of your system settings, I've got my AirPods Pro set for my output. It'll do the same thing when it comes to our DAW. 
your output or what you're monitoring with are your AirPods. Your input, what we'll get to, are going to be your microphones and your audio interface. So here I have PreSonus Studio One. It is the digital audio workstation that I'm used to using. And here on my channel, I've got many tutorials if you're new to recording music. I wanna highly encourage you to check those videos out at your own time. We're gonna go to our Studio One settings. And first and foremost, we're gonna start with the basics, our playback device and our recording device. So under the audio setup tab within preferences, I've got my AirPods Pro selected for my playback device and my recording device is my Universal Audio Thunderbolt, my Apollo Twin, just out of shot here. This is interface. So here we actually have the benefit of having two different devices. I'm monitoring through my AirPods and then my Universal Audio interface is what I've got this microphone plugged into. On processing for now, I didn't have to change this whatsoever for one I typically normally use. I've got dropout protection set to maximum, single 32-bit, enable plugin, nap, but as you can see, we've got some major latency. Now, a lot of the calculations PreSonus Studio One will kind of take care of when it comes to your audio interface, but not with the AirPods as we'll see in just a second. All right, everyone, so we've got our AirPods set up as our monitoring device, our playback device, our AirPods, and then we have our audio interface set up for our recording device. I have my Shure SM81 here on the boom stand. This is plugged into channel two of my audio interface. What I'm gonna do, and this is something that you're gonna to have to do in your own system settings to find out how much latency you're actually getting from your AirPods. So here's the trick. You're gonna take one of your AirPods and you're gonna place it right up against the capsule of one of your microphones. Whatever microphone you're using to record, I'm gonna place this up against the capsule. And I've rendered out this metronome so you'll be able to see clearly the effect of latency. But if I hit record on this audio track, what we should see in a perfect environment is that each of our transients are lining up exactly, but I've no doubt we're gonna have some delay. So I'm gonna hit record. Okay, and I can clip gain this up quite a bit so we can see exactly where the transients are. So here on measure three, you can obviously see that this metronome is delayed. In fact, let's try to listen to these at the same time. So that is the effect of latency. You can hear, it almost sounds like a slapback delay has been added to our signal. We need it to be much cleaner than that. So I'm gonna duplicate this track, arm it for recording. We need to do a little bit of math here. So I'm gonna go right where this transient I believe is starting. We'll try to find the cleanest transient we can. That one looks pretty good. We'll start right there for now. Now at the bottom of PreSound Studio One, you can actually change what this is reading out from seconds, samples to bars. I'm gonna set it to samples. I'm gonna open up my calculator app. On my calculator app, I'm gonna type in this number. We have two, four, one, eight, six, four. Now we need to go to the beginning where it's supposed to be. We're gonna do minus two, four, zero, 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 zero. It'd be pretty easy, 1864. So we are delayed by 1864, 1864 samples. If you go to Preson Studio One Preferences, there's a setting under the advanced tab, go to advanced and then audio. At the bottom, you'll see a record offset. This is basically telling the computer, I want you to correct any recorded material that I have by a certain amount of samples. So I'm gonna type in here minus 1864. If I hit enter and then apply, what will now happen, we're gonna re-record and we're gonna see how much more accurate the computer is getting. So here I'm gonna mute my first recorded AirPod Pro. I've duplicated the track. I'll do the same thing. I'm gonna record a little bit. Okay, I'll clip gain this up and let's see if we got better or worse. All right, that looks a whole lot better. So you can see the record offset has shifted our audio. So as soon as we were done recording, 
it was much closer to where it needed to be. Now you can spend more time if you want to sync these up. I would encourage you just to use your ears though. So if I hit the space bar, I wanna listen to, how does it sound? Does it sound like a singular metronome? Now that's pretty close. You can obviously take this as far as you want to. You can keep recording over and over again and make that adjustment. Again, go to PreSonus Studio One Preferences, Advanced, Audio, and then you have your record offset. You can finagle this number around. And also, if I were in like a legit recording environment, like I were having people to come over to record, I would want to do this every time we set up a new microphone or we had a new microphone cable. Every single variable is going to factor into how much latency you may or may not be having, okay? Like I mentioned earlier, your AirPods Pro, that setting from transparency to adaptive to noise canceling, they could all have different factors of latency. So make sure you're doing this test as often as possible. Also, it's just a good test in general to be able to do that. Even if I were using a wired pair of headphones, you could take your wired headphones, put them up against the microphone, do this technique, and you'll be able to check for any sort of latency. Now, a big thing too, if you decide to not use your AirPods Pro, you need to go into your settings and you need to set this back to zero. So your record offset is specifically set up for your AirPods Pro. Make sure it's back at zero when you go back to recording with regular headphones, okay? So that is my delay compensation trick, okay? It's pretty common. You could do that yourself. I want to actually record some music. So I've got the same microphone set up here. I'm going to grab my guitar. You see what I did there with my AirPod in? I was actually able to move around the room. Got set to transparency. One of the biggest negatives also with using the AirPods, and I don't think this is bad, but because I've got it set to transparency mode, I can hear what's going on around me. You will not be able to software monitor what you are recording. So if you're used to using the direct monitoring switch that's on like your Focusrite Scarlet or your audio interface, you're being able to hear like your, your recorded track with plugins on it. You will not be able to hear that when you're using your AirPods. Your AirPods are going to give you transparency. You'll be able to hear what's going on around you. You'll be able to hear the metronome. You'll be able to hear the tracks in your head. But if you're trying to add like a compressor to your acoustic guitar, you're trying to record with a bunch of pedals, this will not necessarily work out unless you have like an amp in the room that you can hear. So I'm just gonna play a little bit of guitar and I'm gonna try and play in time with this metronome. Okay, and let's back to what I just recorded. All right, here I've got my M-Audio Oxygen 25. If you are using a MIDI controller like this, there's a definite delay. I don't know if this is gonna be usable with the AirPods if you're using a device, but I will say if you're just clicking the screen, it's much more responsive to click on the screen than it is to use a MIDI control device. So if you've got a controller like this and you're trying to use your AirPods, you're probably going to be frustrated with that process. But if you're used to using your keyboard or using your computer itself, I'm not noticing any delay whatsoever in the signals. That's pretty interesting as well. But if you're in an environment like I was just doing, if you're recording acoustic guitar, if you're recording vocals, if you have somebody coming over to your studio to record vocals and they have a pair of AirPods, they're probably most comfortable putting the AirPods in. And if they're able to put the AirPods in and sing effortlessly, that's probably gonna be a whole lot better than slapping a big pair of headphones on their head. I hope this has given you a lot of creative ideas of how you can be using the AirPods in your home studio or any sort of Bluetooth device. Just make sure you're compensating for that latency that you have. And then of course, when it comes to mixing and things like that, you really don't have to worry too much about latency you should be able to hear that stuff in real time. But that's how to get your AirPods set up in your home studio environment. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like and subscribe buttons. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. I'll try to get to those as soon as possible. Now, YouTube's recommending you check out this video just over my shoulder. So give that a watch and I'll see you the next one. All right, bye.